Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be looking at an interesting exponential logarithmic equation. Kind of like a mixture and a homemade equation. Okay, so homemade basically means that I, I kind of came up with the idea. I haven't seen or I haven't taken this problem from somewhere else. But anyone can come up with a problem like this, right? So we have this ln x to the power ln x to the power ln x equals 1. And we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting two methods and also uh, I'm going to show you a graph at the end. So we'll also talk about some interesting cases. Anyways, let's get started. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a look at this big exponent here. That is the exponent of x. So by using rules of logarithms, I'm going to move that to the front. That's going to give me ln x to the power ln x times ln x equals 1. And then we can use that property one more time. And this time we're going to move this to the front. And that's going to give me ln x times ln x times ln x equals 1. Hopefully this makes sense. When I write ln x to the power ln x, the power, the base is x, not ln x. Because we would write it as ln x to the power ln x if ln x were the base. Or was the base? Or were the base? Anyways. So... We have this product, and since we wrote the same thing three times, this means ln x to the third power equals 1. And as you know, a real number, if ln x is a real number, then it only has one cube root, and that is the 1. So from here we get ln x equals 1. And what is that supposed to mean? It just means since the base is e here, by using the definition or whatever knowledge you have, x equals e. Euler's number. Awesome. So we got the solution, but is that the only solution? Good question. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. And did I call this one first method, by the way? I probably didn't. But let's just call this one first method. We'll, to, we'll look at the second method, and then we'll talk about a couple other things before we can conclude that uh, we can conclude the number of solutions. All right? So, Second method. For my second method, let me rewrite the original problem first. ln x to the power ln x to the power ln x equals 1. I'm going to use substitution, obviously. Right? So let's do the following. I want to call ln x something. How about calling this t? Okay, you got to be careful here. Because if you write, what is ln x to the power ln x, right? Is it t to the power t? No. As I said earlier, this does not equal ln x to the power ln x, so you can't write it as t to the power t. We have something different. So we have to be very careful. If ln x is t from here, if ln x is t, x becomes e to the power t. So that's what we got to use, right? So ln x to the power ln x becomes, since this is x, that's our base. We have to write this as ln x, which is e to the t, and then that to the power ln x, which is t. Okay, so this becomes ln e to the power t squared, which is actually t squared, because you can go ahead and move this to the front. Awesome. Now, that's our exponent, and the base is x again, so ln x to the power ln x to the power ln x. Now, I've taken care of this. Notice that right here. So now we can write this as ln x to the power ln x, which is e to the t, to the power t squared. Awesome. That makes a lot of sense, right? Hopefully. Now, what is e to the power t to the power t squared? You're supposed to multiply the exponents. t times t squared is t time. Ooh, that's nice. Yes, absolutely. It's always t time. Uh, that gives you ln e to the power t cubed. And as you know, t cubed can be moved to the front, giving us t cubed times ln e, which is t cubed. So this expression actually is equal to t cubed. Nice. So we had ln x to the power ln x to the power ln x equals 1, but it's equal to t cubed. So from here, t equals 1. Okay. t time. So since t equals 1, what is t? t is equal to ln x, and that's equal to 1. This implies, by definition again, x equals e. Okay, again, we got the same solution, which should not be a surprise, right? Of course, we're doing the same problem. If you got a different solution, that would be very, very problematic. 
So now we got x equals e great. So can there be more than one solution? Why not, right? There could be. And I just want to bring up a couple different cases here because remember I told you that I was going to show you some other stuff. What would happen if you had four of these instead of three, right? Hmm. Can you directly conclude that this implies, and if I call ln x equals t with my, I think that was the second method, right? Yeah. Uh, using my following my second method, if I called ln x equals t, would this give me t to the fourth equals one? What do you think? Please let me know. And obviously this would imply t equals one and t equals negative one if this were the case. And t equals one would imply x equals e, and t equals negative one would imply x equals one over e. Would those be valid solutions if we had four of these? That's the first question I want to pose. And the second question I want to pose is, what would happen if we had infinitely many of these? Think about it. Imagine. And this would go on forever. N equals 1. What would be the solution? Would there be one solution? Would there be more than one solution? Obviously, we're not looking at the value. We're just trying to find x. So there could be more than one solution, like hypothetically, right? But uh, would that work? And what would that be? That's my second question. I know I ask you more than two questions, but... Let's call it the second question. Make sense? Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph real quick, and then we'll just finish up, okay? But just think about these questions, and please, please let me know what would happen. When I looked at the case with four LNs, uh, kind of ran into some issues with problems, and if you please let me know what you find, maybe I'll talk about those as well in the comment section. So. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of this function. And this graph is actually kind of interesting. Why? I mean, all graphs are interesting, but some are more, more interesting than others. And I think this is, by the way, I, I just had to use parentheses because uh, Desmos kept giving me grief for not using parentheses around the argument of the ln function. And then I just wanted to make this uh, exponentiation or the tower more clear, so I used more parentheses. Anyways, it's kind of too parent parenthetical, but... Anyways, so what do you notice about this graph? First of all, E is a solution, yes, looks like it. That seems to be the only solution because our graph is actually always increasing. And it's only defined for certain values. You know, x needs to be greater than 1. What happens if x is 1? Then you get something like 0 to the power 0, and I don't think that's allowed. That's why that, that, that has to be an open dot. Anyways, I talk too much. So, But I just want to show you uh, this graph, and if you can't see it clearly, let's zoom in a little bit and take a look at this graph real quick. Notice that we have the solution right here at x equals e, right? But not only that, that is also a special point. I think, if I'm not wrong, please correct me if I'm wrong, but that seems to be a point of inflection, don't you think? Look at the concavity. It's going from concave down to concave up, I think, but it's just a visual observation. Please let me know what you think. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.